You tweeted actually on June 12th something fairly similar. You said, to be clear, even as wage growth is uh, greater than price growth, households are still struggling with price levels that are too high. Both of these things can be and are true. Inflation adjusted wages are reliably rising and high prices are still a stressor for American households. So what do you tell people the solution is to that? Well, thank you uh, for having me on. And you've already ticked through so many important parts of that solution. Uh, simply put, it's to build on the progress we've made thus far. Maintaining the strong job market, uh, a plan to add 2 million affordable homes to that housing supply shortage that you so dramatically took us through a minute ago, that's critical. Plans to reduce child care costs so child care is affordable to every caregiver who wants to go to work. That's good for them. It's good for their budget. It's good for the economy. And at the same time, while we maintain the progress we've made, continue to put downward pressure on inflation, lower costs, lower lower health care premiums, lower insulin drug costs, lower prescription drug costs, lower costs for broadband, for groceries, for utilities. We're going to keep pushing as hard as we can in that direction. And that combination leads to rising real wages, rising real incomes, more buying power. Again, building on the progress we've made. Not there yet, but moving in the right direction. So let's talk about this, because when people have inflation, it's not an abstract number. It's specific things. In some cases, it's their housing prices, their rental prices, their car prices, their child care prices. So what you're describing is hand to hand combat with inflation. Literally, if, if, right. if uh, Pro housing Pro inflation product is to product, right? If housing prices are too high, make more housing. If child care is an issue, provide more uh, child care. If, uh, if if you know what you call providing downward pressure, we economically think of that as interest rates, right? You keep interest rates high. It, it suppresses the economy or brings, you know, cools things down. You're talking about something that sounds more tangible to the American people than monetary policy. Well, it has to be very tangible because if you think about some of the most salient prices in people's everyday lives, gas and groceries, well, when it comes to gas, you have a president who uh, just oversaw the release of a million uh, barrels of gasoline uh, in the Northeast, and this was right to, to help uh, with the July 4th upcoming weekend. And, and we've actually seen gas prices this year that are below below the price they were a year ago. At the same time, again, while wages are higher, meaning more, more buying power at the pump. Now, you talked about housing and child care. Those are two areas where the market, left to its own devices, simply won't provide the affordable services that people need. There's far too little affordable housing. We have a plan to change that to the tune of 2 million units. Congress has to work with us on that. Similarly, with child care, we've actually done a lot already through the stabilization fund in the rescue plan to make sure we preserve a lot of child care providers over that hump, make sure families uh, have some of the income they need. But that's already uh, uh, expired. So we need to get back with Congress and make sure we get the affordable child care, affordable housing that people need. Uh, the housing issue has come up a lot because of the conversation about immigration. And it's everywhere in the world, right? Everybody always says we don't have housing for these immigrants. We have infrastructure issues in which we don't have enough housing pretty much in every major city in the world. But one of the other things that comes up um, is uh, immigration and its effect on the economy. The Congressional Budget Office has just come out with, I, I think, a projection that indicates a lot of our economic growth over the next decade or so is going to be as a result of immigration. Well, first of all, on housing, let me point out that the, this housing shortage was 10 years in the making, okay? So this met us when we got here. Prior administration simply uh, hadn't been able to get much done in that space. We've already uh, uh, done a, a lot to help uh, keep evictions and foreclosures way down during the pandemic. But now that we're on the other side of that, we have to implement the broader plans we were just talking about. Look, when it comes to immigration, uh, the president has always had a twofold program, secure the border and uh, make sure we have a welcoming path of legal immigration for people who want to be part of the, the fabric of this country, of this economy, of our culture. That's something the president has been committed to since he got here. But securing the border is definitely a piece of that. And it's something we've tried to work with uh, with uh, folks across the aisle. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, have often been unwilling to uh, shake the president's hand on this issue. One of the things going to come up in this election, because Donald Trump talks about it, is tariffs. Uh, imposing tariffs on other countries, imposing tariffs particularly on China. He's talking about an across-the-board tariff on China. It's a complicated issue because 
it's a real issue, right? The, 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 the cheap goods that we get from China. Uh, there are a lot of Americans who think it undercuts American manufacturing and American jobs. But there's going to be pressure because he's talking about an across the board tariff uh, for for Joe Biden to be talking about the kinds of tariffs and things he's going to do on China, which has started to happen. What's the real answer here? Yeah, I don't think it's that complicated. I think it's the difference between the narrowly targeted, very precisely uh, targeted tariffs that President Biden has put in place uh, in areas where we export, uh, where we import very little from China. In fact, uh, a little bit less than 4 percent of our imports as uh, regards to the recent announcement that the president has made. I mean, when it comes to electric vehicles, where the president took that uh, tariff rate uh, up to uh, 100 percent for Chinese EVs, we import less than 400 million with an M. So that's, uh, you know, virtually nothing with an economy that's $28 trillion in size. On the other hand, uh, the former president has a set of tariffs that are incredibly sweeping and the opposite of targeted on 60 percent, a 60 percent tariff on everything from China and 10 percent on all imports. Now, let's stop calling it a tariff. Let's call it a tax. It is a tax on consumer spending that will hit middle class families and have have exactly the opposite effect on inflation of everything we've talked about so far in this president's agenda. We are working hard to lower costs in prescription drugs and all the areas we've talked about. And Republicans want to repeal those rules, which, of course, would mean higher prices in the area of health care, in the area of energy, in the area of housing in China and child care, uh, certainly in, in, uh, in health care coverage. And then on top of that, add a massive sweeping set of tariffs, which are a sales tax for uh, consumers, highly regressive, uh, hit the middle class hard, and highly inflationary. Even estimates by former members of the uh, Trump team uh, tell us that that will raise inflation. So uh, exactly the wrong direction to go on that.